Absolutely. Since Babel, Babel has fallen. Well, people say, well, that's Babylon. That's a city. Well, the word Babel, as in Tower of Babel, means confusion. Fusion. Yes, go ahead. You could say, well, confusion has fallen. A city that makes the nations drink the wine of the wrath of their whoring. Yahweh himself has always likened Israel's going after other Elohim to worship and obey them as idolatry, which is an, is a, an act of adultery between him and his bride, his wife, his woman, you might say. Going back to Exodus 20. Go ahead. Given the Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments are technically a prenuptial agreement of marriage. Amen. Between Yahweh and Israel. Now, anybody in the world, whether you're a Christian, a Jew, a Muslim, a Buddhist, a Hindu, an animist, a pagan, any one of you are welcome to come and join in this number and be the betrothed of Yahweh as his Israel. But if you do, you have to come under these terms of the relationship as described by Yahweh. And if you don't, you're not of that relationship. Mm -hmm. This has nothing to do with salvation. But what I'm saying now is that salvation is another contract with different terms. And I know that there are a certain people group of a certain religious uh, disposition which says, we're the bride of Christ. Well, if Yahweh himself here is marrying, as it were, Israel... And in Jeremiah chapter 4, he talks about divorcing the northern kingdom, the ten tribes of Israel, not divorcing the southern kingdom, which are the other two tribes of Israel. And then he talks about calling his people back. If you look at Jeremiah 31, and it talks about restoring them a renewed covenant. You go, wait a minute, who's the bride of Christ? Is, is Christ marrying one and Yahweh marrying another? Well, what's going on here? They have to be one and the same, correct? Am I wrong? Is that now? They have, no, 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 no. They ain't two brides. Well, is, there, is, 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 is Yahweh's the Father marrying one group, group of people, marrying Israel, and, and Jesus the, the Christ marrying another group of people? No, no, no. I'm talking about where it says uh, who Yeshua marries. What I'm saying is I'm trying to bring up the point that we have some confusion going on. We have a little bit of babble happening. Okay, you scared me for a minute. Go ahead. What I'm saying is, because we don't read his words in Hebrew and know what he said, we don't know what he says except for what we've been told. And what we've been told is pretty much of a bunch of babble. And what we, what we need to do is figure out what he really said and what we really need to believe for what good. Now, I'm not trying to say you've got to work yourself into salvation. As you said earlier, Billy, it's a free gift. But... Yahweh himself said that he scattered his people across the face of the earth. Not only, you know we have this saying, I'm going to throw you out the door and don't let the, don't let the screen door hit you in the butt. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what Yahweh says is, I'm going to kick you out and I'm going to let it hit you and I'm going to chase you with a sword. I'm going to chase you, speaking to his people Israel, I'm going to chase you around the earth and scatter you like dust in the wind. Sword will follow you. Plague and pestilence and grief, and psychosis, and wild animals, and it's going to drive you across the face of the earth for per near 3,000 years. That's what he said to his people. Now, I personally believe we're at the end of that time of that curse, and I believe that Yeshua hanging on the cross outside the walls of Jerusalem, he was lifted up to draw his people back to this relationship. I agree with that. Now, because he was lifted up, paying the penalty for our willful sin, and even for the things that we might not have known that we were doing willfully, that was maybe not even on purpose, the fact is we've all rebelled. Every one of us, whether we were part of this people group or not. And because Yeshua was lifted up, it was kind of like when you're playing hide-and-go-seek, and it's the end of the day, and it's like, look, just call everybody in. And so you say, oh, they all have for and free. Yeah. And every, oh, yeah, okay, everybody's supposed to call them free. Everybody's supposed to come back to start because it's time to go home. For Yeshua to be lifted up is to call everybody back home who had been scattered and cast 
around the face of the earth as the curse that Yahweh put on his people. And he says, on account of Yeshua, we'll call it all good and you guys can come back. Come back to what? Well, now look at the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son is a New Testament parable story that Yeshua gave to his disciples. And briefly, there was a father who had two sons, and the younger son said, I'm out of here. Give me my inheritance. I want to go party. So the father liquidated a certain amount of his assets, gave the money to his younger son. The, the older son was pretty ticked off, and he kept working in the fields. But the younger son took off, went to a foreign country, party, spent all his money. A famine came, and it ruined him. The only job he could get after losing everything was feeding slop to the pigs. And one day he was feeding slop to the pigs and saying, man, I wish I could eat some of the food these pigs are eating. And thought, hey, why don't I go home? Why don't I go back to my father's house? Now, an interesting thing, the story, if you stop there for a moment, we don't read Hebrew. So we just think, okay, I was slopping foods and he was kind of hungry, so he thought, man, I'd sure like to eat the food of one of these pigs. Why don't I go home? There's more to it in Hebrew. You see, the word for pig in Hebrew literally is chazir, which means one who returns. He was sitting there looking at the food that he was feeding to one who returns, the pig, and he was thinking, I sure wish I could eat the food of one who returns. A pig. The word pig and one who returns is the same word. And Got it. And he stuck in his head and said, why don't I be one who returns and return back to my father's house and eat his food on his table? Maybe, just maybe, I can find a place of forgiveness as a servant, as a worshiper. And he goes back home and says, I'm not worthy to be called your son. Let me just please be one of your hired hands and eat the food of one who returns. And his father said, I've been waiting for this day. And he took him back as a full-fledged son. Absolutely. Now, the older son was pretty upset, but that gets into another story. Yeah. point is, what does it look like to come home and eat the food of one who returns? Anybody who thinks that the blood of Jesus was poured out so that you can keep partying and keep eating the food that is not your father's, and living it up with the hellions and whores, you got a wrong story, you got a wrong doctrine, you got false prophets preaching in your ear. What this story is, is we who would choose, the Hebrew word to return is actually teshuva, those who would return to the instructions of Torah are to eat at the Father's table. Amen, brother. Because we're forgiven, because we're saved by His benevolent kindness, a free gift to anyone, no matter whether you can claim one of these people in the Bible as your ancestor or not, he opened up the door and said, anybody who wants to come back to my kingdom, my eternal dominion, and these words, you're free to come back, but the first thing you got to do after cleaning yourself up by the blood of Yeshua is by actually decontaminating yourself. First thing you need to do is learn these words, because this is the terms of negotiation. This is the terms of relationship. This is a legal contract between Yahweh and his people. And what I keep seeing all through this Old Testament is every time his people strayed and they got in big trouble, a few things would happen. Look at Leviticus 26. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 28 to 30. Yahweh always says, when you guys turn away, the weather will not cooperate. The wild animals will come against you. There will be plague and pestilence. It will not rain, and your crops will wither, and then your enemies will come against you, and your government will come against you. But when you return to me, I will turn the whole thing around. That's what he says. We can look what's going on right now today and see that everything in Leviticus 26 appears to be what's upon us. And if you don't think it's upon us enough to warrant being classified as Leviticus 23, or excuse me, Leviticus 26, you'll notice that there's four different escalations of the matter in oh, yeah. 26. Yeah, oh, yeah, come on. He's going to start with one thing, and if you guys still don't return, he'll amp it up a bit. And if you still don't return, he's going to crank it up even some more. And pretty soon, I'll tell you, it sounds like the tribulation. But he didn't call it the tribulation.
tribulation, he said, this is just the way it works. This is the physics, the mechanics of the dynamics of our relationship. Who? Yahweh and Israel. Yeah, and it's a well-old machine, ain't it? It's been around, this was about 1500 B.C. So this, this, the terms of this contract have been at force in the works for 3,500 years. And for anybody to think, oh, yeah, we're, we're Judaizing. Excuse me, this had nothing to do with Judah. Judah is one of 12 tribes, and this was a covenant made with the collection, the confederacy of all 12 tribes. That's right. This has nothing to do with Judaizing. This has to do with the heart of yod Hey vav Hey. Now, interesting thing, if you look at the word yod Hey vav Hey, I, I mentioned Yahweh a few times, and like I said, the Jews aren't supposed to say it, and that's fine. The, word, the letter Yod as a prefix of a word, and then the rest of the three letters is the verb of the word, which means to cause to exist or to destroy from existence. So when you're saying Yahweh, one of the things you're saying is he will cause it to exist, he will cause it to be. And it's also saying he will destroy, he will cause it to cease from existing. If you bear that in mind, every time you read through this story, of the entire Old Testament, when you say, he will cause it, he will cause what? Well, not only is the maker and creator of the heavens and the earth, as you read in the book of Revelation, but he's the guy who will sustain the terms of his contract with his people. He will cause the contract to either appear to be for the sake of being evident, or he will make it appear to not be. He says in other books of the prophets, he says, you will forget you were ever my people. You will forget you, I was ever your Elohim. You will forget we ever had a relationship, and you will become lost among the nations of the earth, among whom you will be scattered. If you then go to Ezekiel 36, chapter, chapter 36, verse 23, Yahweh then is talking about how he's going to turn this whole thing around. And he says, I'm going to look it up so I can read it very, very clearly. He says that Israel has been about the business of doing something that he doesn't appreciate. So if you start reading in chapter 36 of Ezekiel, he says, uh, let me see. Um, you know, I'd, li I'd love to read the hell chapter. I don't know if you can stand that. But well, i got something else I need you to read, too. Well, I'm going to read something else, too. i tell you what, keep Ezekiel brief. i got to get you to Leviticus 19. He's going to have to make two of uh, these uh, jumbo files anyway. But go ahead and read what you're going to read, the, 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 the meat right there. I know you'd love to read the whole chapter. And like I said, I can get you back on again from home, okay? This is not a problem. But go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do Ezekiel. Then i got to get you to Leviticus 19. Okay. Um, I mean, let me back up to the 35 a little bit. Thus said the Master Yahweh, as all the earth is rejoicing, I shall make you a ruin. As you rejoice... Because the inheritance of the house of Israel was laid waste, so I do to you. Be a ruin, O Mount Seir, as well as all of Edom, all of it. And they shall know that I am Yahweh. Now, hear what he's saying. See, Edom and Seir is now in the land of uh, Jordan, in Syria. It was the land of Esau that was Jacob's brother. And he says, listen, you guys rejoiced as I whooped my sons because they have turned away from me. You guys laughed, you scoffed, you marked, mocked you. You have thought it was all about you. When I'm done punishing, chastising, correcting them, I'm going to turn my attention to you and give you guys what for. Chapter 36. And you, son of man, prophesy to the mountains of Israel, you who say, O oh, mountains of Israel, and you shall say, O oh, mountains of Israel, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus said the master Yahweh. Now notice, every time in English, I'm going to ad lib here, Every time in English it says, hear the word of the Lord, hear the Lord God. It does not say that. This is Hebrew, this is yod vav -Hey's personal sayings to his personal prophet, and he calls himself yod -Hey vav -Hey, Yahweh. And the reason I say Yahweh, a couple different things. The word in our, the state, the great state of Iowa, I-O-W-A, can be pronounced Yahweh. The word Hawaii can be read backwards as Yahweh. An Alaskan Chinook Indian has a word for it. There it is, meaning the one who ex caused it to exist, which is pronounced Y-A-W.